If you were one of the many people who loved Passion of the Christ but wished it could have been a bit more When Harry Met Sally, then you'll be happy with producer Brian Grazer, who's about to make Prodigal's Son, a romantic comedy about a workaholic single woman whose mother sets her up with Jesus Christ. In the film, Jesus is working as a carpenter at Ikea and has settled in Los Angeles after returning to Earth for Armageddon. And I didn't make a word of that up. But how loyal are they staying to the Jesus origin story? Grazer assures us that he's not out to offend anyone, saying he won't be having sex. So if nothing else, we know they're keeping the character Jewish. More proof that Americans can't take a joke, but they can take your house, as the lawsuits against Borat just keep on coming. First it was two Romanians who were suing because they were told the movie was going to be a documentary about poverty. Can't see that one getting up. Then Cindy Street, the dinner party lady, she also brought suit. Now two of the drunken frat boys are trying to get their scene cut from the DVD, after they failed to get it removed from the theatrical release. Because of the success of the film, one of the boys claims that he's lost a prominent position in his fraternity, presumably head bottom smacker, while the other one's lost an internship, presumably assistant to the head bottom smacker. As worldwide gross moves towards a quarter of a billion dollars after only one month in release, and 20th Century Fox prepares for more lawsuits to come, Borat could end up being both the most expensive and the most profitable film since whatever the last one was. It was uh, coming to America. Shut up! Alrighty. Well, it looks like Britney Spears is in the news again, but that's not remotely interesting, so I'm going to talk about Sam Raimi instead. Sam Raimi's had a long-standing love of 1930s pop classics. In fact, it was losing out on the chance to make The Shadow back in 1994 that caused Raimi to go ahead and make Darkman in its place. Well, thanks to the success of Spider-Man, as well as poor bank security, Sam Raimi now has enough scratch to buy the entire Street and Smith back catalogue, and the rumour is that he plans to make films out of all their major characters. If you're familiar with Street and Smith, that would make you 87 years old and put you outside the Bazura Project demographic. Still, you might remember some of their incredibly cool characters like Doc Savage, Nick Carter, Buffalo Bill, or The Avenger. By far the most popular is The Shadow, who is probably best known for the radio series voiced by Orson Welles, and that's the character Raimi will be coming back to first. Yes, ignoring the 94 version of The Shadow with Alec Baldwin, the new Shadow will be out, let's say, early 2009. The traditional purveyor of award show injustice, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, has already shortlisted two categories, Best Original Song and Best Documentary for the 79th Academy Awards to be held in February next year. Best Song will be narrowed down from 56 songs to two, three or four, depending on how many are written by Tim Rice. There are a couple of surprises in there too. Last year's winner, 3-6 Mafia. They're back in contention with another song about a low-life wannabe who thinks he's hot with the ladies. As is O oh Kazakhstan, a song that condones throwing Jews down a well, which is actually in a bit of legal trouble as well, with someone else claiming he wrote the song first. And of the 15 shortlisted docos, which will eventually be reduced to five, Almost all are concerned with Iraq, religious fundamentalism, or politics. An inconvenient truth is also in the running, confirming, as our Prime Minister believes, that movies really are escapist make-believe fun. J.J. Abrams, who brunged us Felicity, Alias and Lost, has been attempting to make the jump to the big screen, but he still can't shake those TV roots. Fresh from his no longer resembles the show on which it was based helming of Mission Impossible 3, Abrams will turn his attentions to the next Star Trek movie. Long since attached as producer, Abrams has now finally been confirmed as director, and rumours suggest the movie will be a prequel set in the Starfleet Academy days of Kirk, Spock and McCoy, because nothing has audiences clamouring for tickets more than the prospect of a prequel. Abrams is a pretty capable director, so he is hoping the film will be better than that other Star Trek prequel, Enterprise, the creative equivalent of a backyard knitting needle abortion. If you were still laughing two hours after our show finished last week, hopefully with us and not at us, then you probably missed the AFI Awards, where Ten Canoes took the top honours with six awards, including Best Film, Best Director and Best Screenplay. One of the more promising aspects of Ten Canoes' success is that for the very first time, Australia will field an entry into the Best Foreign Language Film category at next year's Oscars. Apparently, The Adventures of Barry McKenzie was ineligible 30-odd years ago, even though no one had a clue what was being said there. Other winners on the night were Shane Jacobson for Best Actor in Kenny, proving that the best actors do talk a lot of shit, but in his case, quite literally, and Susie Porter for Best Supporting Actress in The Caterpillar Wish. And we'd like to formally congratulate Susie for finally breaking her tradition, getting her tits out in every Australian film she does. It's really great to see an actress of her... 
She does get her tits out. Right. I think your tits are great, Susie. 